I've come to Jarash unexpectedly because I had nothing to do. And it reminds me as I walk through the little sook area about the world's worst toilet that I've ever been to in Jordan. So let's hope I don't have to go in the next little while. So I'm going to cheat for a minute and I'm just going to read off this sign that says uh, the ancient city of Jarash, one of the monumental most integrated amongst the Levant cities. Levant is the region, the area that it is. Um, and over the history has been known as Jarasho, Achko, uh, Jarasha and Jarash. Founded in the 4th century under Alexander of Macedonia, so Alexander the Great, Jarash in Roman era was experiencing the Golden Age around 63 BC. It lasted about 400 years. Uh, Jarash is uh, 570 metres above sea level, so it's actually quite high. And there's the uh, triumphal arch there to the home. It's got the colonnade streets, uh, the Cordo and, and the Temple of Zeus and Artemis. So they're pretty spectacular. We'll cruise down and have a look at those. And there's uh, plazas and nympho nymphoneums, uh, water areas. Um, in a couple of other recordings I've actually mentioned about the Dicopolis, the 10 major cities, uh, Jarash was one of those. Uh, and Christianity came to Jarash in uh, 350 AD and there's ruins of 16 churches built in, on this site from between 4 and uh, 7th century AD. Uh, Cathedral, Church of Bishops of Isaiah, Church of Street St Theodore, of uh, Cosmos and Damien, St George. Uh, so uh, by 635 AD, Jarash was dominated as an Islam by the Islamic State. The most monumental discoveries was a mosque amidst the, uh, 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 the ruins of an Umayyad period of 749. So 1120 AD, Jarash served as a garrison um, with, uh, was stationed in the Temple of Artemis, so that's uh, near the back of the um, the complex, the uh, antiquity here. At the end of the Ottoman reign, Jarash was the offices, was uh, main office and was used as the first office for Jordanian antiquities. So it has a extensive history and we'll cruise over there to the, um, the triumphal arch. I think this site is about a kilometre long, so uh, we're actually here at the Hadrian's Arch, the Triumphal Arch. We'll cruise past the Hippodrome, which is, uh, that's the top end there of the Hippodrome. And wander, and the first one we'll come to is the Temple of Zeus, the Oval, the Museum. And uh, the really impressive ones are the ones down the back there, the Temple of Artemis and the North Theatre. It's just wonderful and this lymphodium and, and colonnade area is just superb so let's go and have an explore of that. Ancient antiquities goes this one uh, they have at least done some uh, ramps so it is a little bit more uh, wheelchair or uh, walking compatible instead of stairs upon stairs upon stairs. So we're walking up here to Hadrian's Arch. Having a close look here at Hadrian's Arch, you can imagine big statues up in those uh, niches up there. Just wonderful, the flowers and decorations up there. It's just superb. Okay, let's cruise through to the hip. Just looking under the um, seating of the Hippodrome there, and you can just see each strata just um, supported there with those arches just beautiful this is kind of like the gate next door to the one I just filmed before and it has a beautiful mosaic there on the floor one I wish I could read upside down and two I wish I could ring Greek or Latin so I'm just walking into that hippodrome space and uh, <laughs> quite impressive 
265 metres long and 50 metres wide, racing around that central area there. We've got a bit of a representation there of the covering. And those were those seats before that were supported with those arches. If I was making a semi-educated guess, I would have said that those little uh, cavities underneath where I filmed before were um, probably shops or something like that. Okay, let's go explore. Actually, this is a perfect example to show you how far the Jarash antiquity goes. So if you look up there, the Temple of Artemis, be heading up there that's the one with those amazing floating uh, floating columns it's just beautiful so it's probably a kilometer away cameras and lots of dignitaries something must be happening <laughs> lots of police and so we're here at the south gate of the uh, ancient city and this is used as the current entrance but it wasn't always the way this used to be just uh, the market entrance on the way to Philadelphia, and Philadelphia is modern day Amman. So this is just one part of the gate, still quite ornate though. In through those gates, which are the east gates, you come directly into the Sook area, so these little, um, these little shops, little storefronts. This from, is from about 110 AD to 300 AD. And also a military barracks. Looking along and I see that these ones are carved. And that looks to be carved with like a, a pineapple and a palm tree almost. Just beautiful. I don't think that's their original place where they were meant to be, but... <laughs> so you come into this central colonnade area, the central um, square, really, the circle square. And uh, there's just an absolute straight street down there. We'll walk through there where all those dignitaries are going. And up there on the hill, you'll have the Temple of Artemis, which will get up there as well eventually just spectacular can't zoom out i don't know what's happening here here we go but then if i pan around this way and just up on the top of this hill is the temple of zeus so i'll cruise up there first oh look at that that one's the um the amphitheater looking at the shape of that external building just there i'll uh, cruise up there as well so I'm coming in one of the entrances to the South Amphitheatre. I'm actually going to end up on the stage by the looks of it. Let's uh, cruise through here for a second. Oh, this one leads me uh, into the crowd. We will go. Just spectacular. So I've just moved out of the South Theatre, South Amphitheatre, and I'm cruising up here to the Temple of Zeus. And then I'm just greeted with the whole view of looking down on that square circle. And there's that colonnade street that we'll walk down soon and we'll see the drainage and the, the wheel tracks of the ancients. And uh, our goal is to get over there to the Temple of Artemis and do a reverse selfie. That's the space where Dara taught me how to do that 18 months ago, so that's just fantastic. 
You can see there's only about 20% of this entire site that's been excavated. So uh, you've uh, still got all this space up here that hasn't been excavated yet. So you just don't know what's going to be discovered underneath there. So let's cruise up here to the uh, Temple of Zeus. So there's the plaza just to give you some dimension and perspective and now I'm just going to look up at the columns here at the Temple of Zeus. The whole structure is just amazing. It was um, built around 162 to 163 AD and a uh, temple, a uh, statue of uh, Zeus will have been somewhere prominently up there. So I've managed to do a little bit of a rock climb up here to the temple of Zeus. I am way not dressed for this today. I uh, wasn't expecting to come so uh, <clears throat> you can just see how massive this structure is. You know the size of me. <laughs> Look at the size of that, it's just massive. I'm puffing my way up the hill. That's the South Theatre and the Temple of Zeus, down to the plaza, along that colonnade. Look how absolutely straight and perfect that is, just amazing. And I'm going to cruise over, there'll be some churches just over that rise. And just behind that chicken red is the Temple of Artemis where I'm going to head. Once I get there, I'll turn around and come back again. So I made my way from over there where the South Theatre and the um, Temple of Zeus is and come to this group of buildings here. And what you will find is these are the Christian churches. There's uh, quite a few all bunched up together here. There's no signage to tell me which ones they are, but um, there um, was quite a lot of churches here on this side. So I remembered from when I came up here last time that this was the churches. I didn't remember how many there was, but there's three churches apparently within this space. And that's the uh, Church of Cosmos and Damios, the Church of St John the Baptist, and um, one more, St George. Now this mosaic is pretty spectacular and a non-historical concept we related to this mosaic is the last time I stood here looking at this my guide Dara would be saying to me oh look at the bird oh look at the oxen blah 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 and I couldn't see a thing and it turned out that when I got home I actually went to the optometrist and I actually could not see but when I looked at the photos I could see what he was trying to tell me. Oh look at the oxen, there's the oxen down there. I think there's a, like an elephant or a baboon or something just a, somewhere around there as well. But the other reason why this is called the Church of Damios um, and Cosmos and Damios was um, they were Christian physicians and they unmercilessly gave free health care to the poor so they were martyred by the Romans. So uh, we know they're twin brothers and they are to the top there of that mosaic. So these are three Christian churches here at the Jerash site. Over the top there you can see the South Amphitheatre and uh, Temple of Zeus and we zip around this side we're almost at the Temple of Artemis and that's where I learned to do the reverse selfies and have those amazing photos so let's cruise over there next. So I'm just cruising into the back side of the back rear side of the uh, Temple of Artemis and uh, I just pan around here to the hill behind and what I observe is that there are standing columns and then if I look over here there are other standing columns just poking out of this, the top of the sand there. What that tells me is that the earth, the soil has all um, blown over into that space and covered that space. 
I would anticipate looking at the height of that column, those columns, they're actually where they were originally put. And then all of that hill, that earth, that rubble that's beside it is all accumulated over the centuries. So as my friend Dara had said that only 80, 20% 80, of this site has been excavated. So there's another 80% of it still hidden. And uh, I wonder what could be found if you uh, dug around those uh, columns. As I stagger my way up these stairs, I'm reminded that last time there was a guy selling chai just as he came into the temple, which made it all quite interesting. Oh, there's a little sook. There's uh, other vendors here this time selling the same rubbish over and over and over. Well, what I remember him from him last time is he was selling the water and the chai. It's just a spectacular space. And you can imagine the, uh, the carvings and the statues that were there. But what makes this one so really impressive is the fact that most of the columns are still standing. And I'll do a reverse selfie of this just to demonstrate to you how uh, just amazing the space is. Okay, so this is still in selfie mode, but you're coming actually from the bottom of the, the, the columns and it just makes them look just spectacular with that blue sky behind it. And this is a space where you'd actually see that it's a floating column. If you had like a fork or something that you could stick between the, the bricks, the, the fork would actually levitate, would actually move, demonstrating to you that there's no mortar holding these um, together, holding these on. It is just spectacular. So I was mentioning if I had a fork, but I have a spoon. I have a spoon. I don't know how Gerard did it. He put it in and he could, it moved up and down. It, maybe it was on this one over here. I can't remember how he did it. He put it in. Oh, there it goes. Ben. And then it moves. You can see the spoon slightly moving up and down, trying to hold the camera as still as possible. This is the demonstration that Dara gave me to say that there was no, um, no mortar or anything, it's just gravity holding that, those rocks on top of each other. So I'm just exiting here the Temple of Artemis and you can see five columns here to the front. I'm going to make an anticipation that there was supposed to be a sixth one just to have the symmetry at either side of that wall, those stairs. Just beautiful with that blue sky behind it just makes the whole place just spectacular. Walking beside these rocks and I can see some of the carvings and these ones over here kind of were circles with other smaller circles in between but you know cut off like that they almost look like Star Wars symbols and then there looks to be a wreath in the middle just spectacular just spectacular As I've indicated before, you know, probably underneath my feet here is ruins like this or rocks or stones exactly like this, but they've only excavated this portion. You just don't know what's going to be under this amazing site. Honestly, it's an hour from Amman. It is so worth the visit. Wear comfortable shoes. I chose not to today because I didn't know I was coming. Oh, it's just a spectacular place, Jarash. 
So this is the uh, Church of St Theodore and it's got um, uh, two baptistries. It's got a baptistry and uh, a north and south naves there, um, surrounded by apparently a um, fountain area. But I've been here a couple of hours now, so I'm going to just wander back. There's just too much to see in one day. I think this is another example of what I'm saying about you just don't know what is going to be under that soil because if you can see where this has been uh, cut away to reveal these structures what is under the rest of that soil so this is why I think this is probably one of the most fascinating equal to Petra or probably greater than Petra. I compare, can't compare to completely different times but just beyond amazing. So I've just walked down from the uh, Temple of Artemis and uh, yeah. I wanted to go a shortcut okay. where it was just down some uh, a slope but I had to come down these stairs and there are actually seven sets of stairs in seven tiers. So uh, I don't know if that's significant in any way, shape or form. Ah, seven and seven and uh, it was just beautiful stairs. And now I'm going to head down this colonnade street just here. And in this next section, we'll actually see the bit where there is the, um, the, the sewerage system. So here we have a public fountain, a public place to come and wash. There's a hole there in the uh, in the wall where the water would come down into this space. Just looking up at this amazing structure. How ornate that is. So I'm just coming down into this colonnade street. So orientation, the Temple of Artemis is over there. This colonnade street would be all shops, etc. running down and that's where that um, plaza, that central square is down there. So we'll go for a wander and uh, see if we can see the um, wheel tracks in the, on the stones and the sewerage system. Oh, I can see the, uh, some lettering over there on those stones. So off we go. So I'm just walking along this colonnade and then I see here the ruts in the stone and uh, incrementally every now and then is these circular areas. I'll try and find one that's got a little bit more uh, sun on it in a minute and that's the sewerage system. So those rocks have been worn by over the decades. Walking a little further on, there you see the uh, the sewage, the drainage where the water would go down. And you could almost actually see a line running just where those people are walking. That would have been the, the tracks of the chariots and carts. So I've been walking down this colonnade street and I'm almost like getting to a junction because it's almost like there's uh, four like um, sentinel posts or something like that, square. So if I stand in the middle of this one, you see down this street, 90 degrees down that street, 90 degrees down to the plaza, down that way, and 90 degrees that's up to the churches. So this is probably where water, you know, there'd be like a central reservoir, there'd be fountains and stuff like that where people could, um, could congregate. So it's like, a traffic junction. This one here gives you actually a better example of that that water sewerage um, circle and then there is definite tracks there that you can see where those people are walking. There's a, a groove in the in the stones there. So there we go we just walked down the Carter that central colonnade area heading there to Temple of Artemis and over this side you've got the temple of Zeus up there on the hill 
in this central uh, plaza area and you've got a sewage system running right the way along and here's another one here in this central area so I'm cruising park back past the Hippodrome about to hit Hadrian's Arch and that'll be the end of my giraffe visit today so I've been here a couple of hours and I must say of any antiquity that's got some element of mobility wheelchair access as long as your wheelchair had a lot of suspension uh, this is it it's primitive it's primitive access but at least there'd be something that you would be able to uh, come and experience this space. Oh no, a couple of a square kilometer, a couple of square kilometers, just, uh, just awe-inspiring, amazing architecture. Hadrian's Arch. So 2.30, the call to prayer, and I'm just, uh, cruising out of the Jirash antiquity down into the Sook. Just towering over me is that Hadrian's Arch, that triumphal arch, just magnificent. So uh, you may remember the recording that I did a couple of, um, like a year ago, about the worst toilets that I'd ever been to and it was here at Jirash and I rated them a minus four because there's actually four cubicles in here and they were all just pretty disgusting. And now this woman is trying to demand money to do something natural and uh, just refused. So uh, a couple of other women came in and they didn't have any money so now they're calling off to the relative. So why you have to pay to pee, I have no idea, let alone somewhere that stinks as much as this one does. Ah, welcome to Jirash. Absolutely fantastic antiquity with the worst toilets in Jordan. Do I can just choose any driver or can I just... Do I have to take the one that I brought or can I buy a new one? I can buy a new driver. I don't have to have the one that I bought. I can actually just look at the drivers and just choose any random driver. That's good. Hello, how are you? Thank you.